Hi there. Uh, I finally had a chance to visit Coventry and I only learned recently that that's the home of the Two Tone Records uh, permanent exhibition at uh, the Coventry Music Museum. I was having a, a chat with a friend about ska music and she was saying how Madness is her favorite uh, ska band along with uh, uh, the specials and for me it's always been the beat. But we both agreed that our favorite song, ska song, was Ghost Town. So she said, uh, you do know there's uh, the Coventry Music Museum that has the ghost town car there. The car that was featured in that cool video. And I finally managed to have the chance to head out there. So it was a beautiful drive out to Coventry, going through the countryside. I've visited the, the city uh, a few times, but it was mainly for work, so they were fleeting visits. So this time I made a special effort to uh, have a bit of a short walkthrough uh, around city centre and it had a really wonderful vibe. It's very uh, student-y, you know, uh, Wart University is close by, you get the University of Coventry and I also had the chance to finally see the famous uh, Spawn Street uh, featuring a lot of the evil structures and homes and, and buildings there. You know, Coventry really was the centre of manufacturing during World War II. The city was practically obliterated because uh, a lot of the factories were requisitioned, became factories for the war effort. Great to see how you know the city has uh, developed and just seeing the various architectures. I clocked actually a taxi and it had some fantastic uh, two-tone record type detailing so that was really fun to clock. I headed out to the Coventry Music Museum which is just about five minutes away from the city centre so it was a short drive and I, I got there and when I saw that there were two Vespas uh, parked in the side street, uh, I knew that I was close. <laughs> The actual main entrance is around the corner from that, that side entrance. This village basically uh, features well the museum and also a two-tone cafe and a couple of shops featuring like accessories, tone ska, clothing and memorabilia so it was just really cool to, to actually visit the village. I managed to get to the museum and uh, it was fantastic. The people there are so welcoming and the volunteers there are so knowledgeable. And I didn't expect uh, for the museum to be so interactive. You know, they've got like a room full of uh, electric guitars and then some music apparatuses and things like that. But the main exhibitions are upstairs and when you make your way up this kind of winding staircase, um, it's quite a small museum, but you know, it really packs it in. And it's like wall to wall information, not just about, you know, two-tone records. I was really impressed because, you know, they had exhibitions uh, showing, you know, the history of music in the area dating back 
to Roman times. So they had uh, sheet music featuring, you know, some choral music and also, you know, some information about uh, George Frederick Handel because he apparently uh, visited Co Coventry back in the day and allegedly played the actual organ in the old uh, Coventry Cathedral, which by the way, was completely bombed during World War II. The ruins are still there and it's quite a haunting uh, visual. It's quite powerful because the uh, old new cathedral, they left the ruins there and then they have the new Coventry Cathedral. It's really beautiful and striking and if you're driving around Coventry, you'll see it on the horizon. So getting back to the museum, that they do have a signage posted asking you not to take more than five photographs. And I completely understand that because, uh, you know, with social media, it's so easy to share pictures, videos. Sometimes the element of surprise is lost. And I, I certainly don't want to spoil the visit for anyone who plans to, to head over to the Coventry Music Museum uh, to check out the Two Tone Records exhibition. I'm just going to show you a few pictures. So this year, the special display is to celebrate the Coventry band, uh, The Primitives, and their big hit, Crash, uh, their 1988 song. And so they've got this really cool, um, what they call Crash Elater. And I had a bit of fun, as you can see there. I probably got a bit carried away. And if someone said to me, you know, 30 years ago that, uh, you know, I'd be sitting behind the wheel of the original, uh, the car that was featured in the Ghost Town video. I'm like, no, forget it. What are you talking about? Well, you know, what can I say seeing the Ghost Town car? It was just such great fun. I had the good fortune of meeting the, basically the founder of this museum and his name is Pete. He and his wife actually created this museum uh, 10 years ago. It basically took them three years to collect all the artifacts uh, and set up the exhibitions so you can imagine the amount of dedication and hard work and passion involved in, in seeing all, all of that come to fruition in the form of this museum. A two-tone records uh, collector in Australia, his family donated his whole collection of 45s and LPs. I need to mention um, it was so fun to, to see this. Uh, I, I saw actually one of their uh, displays. They had like a stack of beer, okay? And <laughs> it's basically, they had a uh, ghost town lager. It's uh, locally brewed by the Dillon's Brewery in Coventry. So how can you leave the museum without having one of these or buying one of these? So, you know, it's all for a good cause. So I bought uh, three, three cans. I'm going to gift these to some friends who are crazy about ska music. The plan is uh, we're going to enjoy it while we're listening to some uh, ska LPs. So I just want to show you. So this is the... Um, kind of the brochure that Pete passed on to me and uh, he was just so lovely. There's just so much information uh, about uh, the museum and by the way, uh, it's cash only. I was a bit caught off. I, I didn't realize it was cash only. So I had to go uh, hunt around for uh, for an ATM. So uh, when I got back from the museum, I was just like so psyched and I, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna start listening to some, some ska music now. So uh, I just wanna show you. So I have this, Dance Craze, the uh, soundtrack. And uh, they came out uh, with a special 3LP deluxe edition this year. It's a box set and this features specials, English Beat, or in the UK they're known as the Beat, Bad Manners, Madness, The Selector, The Body Snatchers. Um, it's just wonderful. I mean, you can get this. It's fantastic. So. so that was fun. I had a good listen to that. They're my favorite uh, ska band, and you know, they're all brummies. So, yeah, I got this LP here. This was released in 1980, I think it was 80. So, it's got the hits uh, Mirror in the Bathroom, Can't Get Used to Losing You. I love the uh, artwork there. 
two-tone records so you got that the footsteps there I just love looking at the labels special beat service the label is, it's different it's really cool white and red it's got that little airplane there I confess Jeanette right save it for later that's such a great uh, song and the video is really fun the band members actually went on and formed two different groups so Dave Wakeling and uh, Rankin Rogers they went on in 1984 they produced this LP they set up a general public and the smash hit is uh, tenderness and uh, I remember the the extended long play being played uh, in clubs in San Francisco it was just so fun it was, it was like a floor filler and uh, that song is definitely on my like go-to happy uh, playlist song there's some other really good songs on here uh, never you done that this came out in 1986 hand to mouth I got these two LPs from Amoeba Records uh, on Haight Street in San Francisco I was so happy to find it because because I, I I had the originals but uh, I, I lost it but anyhow these are in great shape and this one was still in its uh, shrink wrap and thankfully you know the vinyl wasn't warped I was I was praying that it wasn't warped and it wasn't and I'm glad I have it and there's the back so I think in the early 90s they did a cover of I'll Take You There uh, sung by the Staple Sisters and th that's really great and you know Rankin Rogers is, is the lead vocals for that They came out with a self-titled LP called Fine Young Cannibals featuring uh, Rolling Gift. So he's a brummie. And the big hit from this LP, this came out in 1986, um, is uh, Johnny Come Home. It's fantastic. And then you have Sus Suspicious Minds. And uh, Blue, I, a lot of people didn't like that song, but I really enjoy it. I think it's a really nice song. And the raw and the cooked FYC fine young cannibal and he's I don't know if you can see the the design but for some reason it just reminds me of uh, Keith Haring's uh, artwork I think they're channeling Keith Haring there because he was really big at that time well, it's hit after hit on this LP right she drives me crazy good thing I'm not the man I used to be I'm not satisfied tell me what don't look back <laughs> it's okay as hard as it is and then their cover of the Buzzcocks the 1978 Buzzcock hit uh, the punk band ever fallen in love so that's my experience uh, visiting a Coventry the Coventry Music Museum and uh, having such a great experience there and meeting the founder and curator Pete uh, and briefly his wife Julie and also my little small uh, stash of ska music uh, mainly the beat so i hope you enjoyed that and uh, i hope to see you again